Whoa, 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 group theory, what are you doing? You're supposed to be maths. And this isn't a maths video, this is chemistry. And isn't maths supposed to be hard anyway? Well, I guess if you say so. So what is a group then? What is group theory? Well, I'm glad you asked. A group has to fulfill four different rules in order to be called a group. These four rules are, there are a predefined list of moves that never changes. Secondly, every action is reversible. Third rule is every action is deterministic. And finally, any sequence of consecutive actions is also an action. So that's what a group is. But what does a group look like? Maybe we want a visual guide. Well, I don't know how a Rubik's Cube is a group. It isn't even maths. There aren't any funny Greek letters or numbers. Well, I guess not maths isn't always about numbers or confusing Greek letters. So say for instance you wanted to get back to your starting position, but you didn't know where to start. What would you do? Well, I guess you could go down the messy route and try and scramble up the Rubik's Cube in an indefinite amount of ways until you got back to your original starting position. But that would be quite long and quite tedious, no fun. Or, you could try making a map. Yes, maybe a map would work. How would you make a Rubik's Cube map though? Well, I guess you can note down what moves you were doing. So, like rotating 90 degrees vertically, clockwise, like so. Or maybe rotating 90 degrees anti-clockwise, but horizontally instead, like so. Could do the reverse of each action. But wait, doesn't that fit in with our rules from before? So that fit in with, we only have a set amount of moves that, we, that never changes, or every action is reversible. Only a set number of moves can be used on a Rubik's Cube, and by carrying out a set number of moves, or a set number of outcomes. But wait, how does this relate to chemistry? How does learning about Rubik's Cubes or groups actually relate to chemistry and molecules? Just as a group isn't restricted to Rubik's Cubes, maths isn't restricted to just numbers. So a group can be further divided into subgroups. For example, a cyclic group is shown here by this boron hydride molecule. You may hear that this boron hydride molecule has an order of three, but what does that mean? I've replaced the hydrogen atoms with different coloured atoms so you can see exactly what an order of three means. It means you can spin it round three times before you get back to your original starting position. A cyclic group is the only type of groups that exist. So another type of group that exists is the dihedral group. What is a dihedral group? Well, a dihedral group, unlike the cyclic groups, describes objects that have both rotational and bilateral symmetry. But what does that mean? Replace the oxygen atoms in this molecule with different colored atoms so you can see just how the rotational symmetry of this molecule occurs. So rotational symmetry is like the cyclic group, so you get the same sort of pattern, but the bilateral is where you flip the molecule upside down and it will still retain the same symmetry. Another group that exists is a symmetric group. We've seen this group earlier with the Rubik's Cube. So how is this molecule similar to the Rubik's Cube we saw earlier? Well, with this molecule, you've got a plane of symmetry that's going vertically through the molecule. 
So, a cousin of the Symmetric Group can also be known as the Alternating Group. With pentagons and hexagons on the bucket board, this has different sets of symmetry. As there are a mixture of hexagons and pentagons on the surface of the bucket board, I guess you could call them rearrangements of each other, or as mathematicians like to call them, permutations. As molecules get more complex, these permutations get more apparent, so these complex molecules can be broken down into molecular shapes. Speaking of these permutations, we can go back to the simpler boron hydride molecule we had earlier and start adding some bits on. So these are these atoms just happen to be arranged in a cyclical way. So adding a cyclic group onto another cyclic group results in something called an abelian group. All cyclic groups are abelian, but an abelian group is not necessarily a cyclic group. Maths is everywhere, you just have to know where to look. Whether it be in shapes of molecules, in Rubik's cubes, or even in nature, maths is really quite beautiful.